Hello, I'm Sean D. Francis, and this is the second video in the Campaign Builder Workbook uh, video series where I walk you through uh, how to use the Campaign Builder Workbook. The link is below, and if you're confused about what this is, then you probably missed the original video, video number one, where we started the campaign survey. So. If you haven't seen that video yet, you should probably stop this, go watch that one, just so you understand what this is all about. Because we'll be picking up where we left off uh, as we discuss the campaign builder workbook. Uh, the link to this is in the video below, or the video description below. Uh, but we're gonna be picking up where we left off filling out the campaign survey for Black Rock Keep. This is the campaign setting that we are building together. Well, I'm building and you're watching, but you know, I like to think that you're here inspiring me. Uh, so we already went through all of the starting village and I'm not gonna to reiterate too much of this, but uh, we're talking about Black Rock Keep. It is a military fortress that is on the edge of civilization. It is protecting the region, the kingdom from the wilderness and the threats beyond. Uh, we outlined some of the NPCs. We gave kind of a, a view of what the village is about and what the village is going through and outlined three points of adventure. And a point of adventure is just where a call to action can take place, where the PCs can go off and explore or maybe ask to take care of something that's in that location. So th these are where you can start planning your adventures. Now we're gonna move out. We've, we've talked about the, the village and that's the first places and people that the PCs are going to encounter. And now we move out a bit and we, we're gonna start talking about the region. And the region is, can be a, well, it's always gonna be a political defined area um, but it, it is can also be defined because of geography uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more of that in a second uh, let's start with a name of the region that the village is located in and I, I struggle with these kind of names I always end up going like a color and a descriptor and that sort of thing um, but I kind of want to pull out the fact this is a bleak uh, area. This is not a thriving, uh, up and coming kind of area. This is this is a bit downtrodden. So I, I'm going to call it a barren, um, B A R E N. But it's got to be something. It's something barren. Uh, I already established that there's going to be some mountains in the in the area. That's why I have the caverns up there. So. Crest Baron, Gr Grim, yeah, Grim Crest Barons. That's the name of the region. So, and think of the region as like a state or a province. Um, in Game of Thrones terms, uh, regions were both political and geographical. So you had like the Reach and Dorne and the Stormlands and the the area, the area is definitely a geographic region. The Riverlands were clearly a geographic region. Uh, the North was a geographic region, but what was the difference between um, the Stormlands and the Reach? Like, I'm sure there were some rivers dividing it, but you, you get a sense that it, they, they blended together a little bit more. So those were more of a political region. Um, here we, we get a, a detailing, and I have both political type regions and geographic regions. Um, districts are more for imperial kind of things. Fiefdoms are your traditional uh, lord and lady over a land. Um, so, so are marches, but marches are a little more interesting. Marches are frontier territories. And that's what we're going to be going with right now. If you want a, a better definition of each of those, 
uh, check out the guide that I wrote about the Campaign Builder Workbook. And it goes into a little bit more detail on each of those different types of regions. But a march is a region that is on the edge of a wilderness, on the edge of unexplored territory or unclaimed territory. Uh, they're usually ruled by um, marquees. I, I, I can't remember the names, but, but they have a special kind of lord lady that rules over them. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to stick with there. <laughs> no reason to dwell on it. Now, there's always a NPC who controls a region. Uh, this is a governor. This is uh, a, a greater noble, somebody that the village leader pays fealty to, is loyal to, at least has to respect. Uh, this is going to be the NPC who is collecting the taxes and and has to coordinate among all the villages in the entire region. Uh, I'm sticking with kind of my feudal uh, noble-led society here. So uh, we're going to have this be a Baron Rothgar. Um, so Baron Rothgar is the person in charge of the Grimcrest Barrens, this march, this this land on the edge of the frontier, the edge of the kingdom. Um, so he's got a lot to deal with because he not only has the standard um, worries of a leader of a region, but he's got to deal with all the headaches that come from being on the frontier. Uh, I'm already thinking that the most powerful NPC in the Grimcrest Barons are going to be, is going to be the person that enforces the Barons' rule. So this is going to be a general. Um, uh, I want this to be an elven general. I already got this kind of elven military element going on. Um, and I'm, I'm not great at off the cuff elven names. So just bear with me here. Um, uh, Dernstall Oakbreaker. The names can always be changed. Don't get caught up on the name. Uh, just think of it in terms of a placeholder and then let the names evolve but the one thing you want to do when you're creating names for npcs is say it out loud a few times uh, i often will write out a name and it looks good because it i'm just reading it and i'm not really having to say it i can just kind of see it as a sigil on the page and then when I come to gameplay and have to say the name, I end up just mangling it. It's just uh, a very muddled name. So say it out loud a few times just so you get the feel of it and know if it's something that you can say easily, if it rolls off the tongue or if it's going to be convoluted. Um, but don't, just because we're filling out the survey, don't feel attached to the name. Uh, sometimes you just slotting in names in fact many times i go to the fantasy name generator and just grab names from there just to slot them in just to keep this going along what's more important is the characteristics that we'll develop later on uh, in other parts of the video uh, but i just want to make a note that this is the elven general uh, for baron rothgar the most influential NPCs. I'm going to keep picking up on the theme. So I'm going to keep picking up on the theme of city leader versus community leader. Uh, there's always going to be kind of this other person um, that's not directly opposed, but definitely has the will of the people behind them. And I, I like the idea of kind of a 
um, folk hero types. So thinking of uh, Robin Hood, uh, keeping the name simple, Gillian Hunt, folk hero, Robin Hood type. It's not necessarily thieving from the rich and giving to the poor, but definitely, definitely maybe a thorn in Baron Rothgar's side, maybe somebody who Baron Rothgar would rather not have to deal with. Uh, definitely maybe somebody that General Oakbreaker uh, is in conflict with at times. Now we get to the most knowledgeable NPC in the Grimcrest Barons. Now, we haven't, I've been trying to bring some magic magical elements, some arcane, arcane stuff into the campaign setting. And we have the phase circle, but we don't really have anything of impact. So I definitely want the most knowledgeable person to be a mage of some sort. And uh, Tarith, um, Aldrin. I don't know what I want this mage to be about yet. Um, I don't have a clear vision of it. And that's the nice thing. I don't have to have a clear vision of it. I just need to have a placeholder. I just need to know that I want the most knowledgeable NPC in the region to be a mage. And we can figure out that NPC's role in the world later. Uh, but now, this is something that when the game starts, uh, if you have a magic user PC, that magic user is going to know Mage Tareth Felderon. That magic user may be an apprentice to Mage Tareth Felderon. Something to keep in mind of like how to fit the PCs into the bigger world. Uh, but they would definitely be aware of who Mage Tareth Felderon is. Um, maybe it's an advisor to the Baron, but I like the idea of totally separate. Just somebody who has their own agenda off to the side. Uh, but if you want to know why there's owl bears somewhere, this, this person will probably know. Okay, let's talk about the most immediate concern of the region. And this can be anything. This can be um, everything from weddings and festivals to military attacks to a dragon breathing down and destroying villages. Um, there can be all sorts of immediate concerns. We have such a strong military theme going. I kind of want to pull back from that. I want to be able to spread things out. I don't want everything to be so military focused. So the most immediate concern of the region is going to be uh, Preparing, I can't spell, preparing for a fall festival. So we're going to start the campaign in the fall. I like starting campaigns in fall, winter. It's a whole Celtic New Year thing. Tr trust me on that. <laughs> Sending PCs into a time of deprivation is a good thing. Um, so preparing for a fall festival is the, the most immediate concern of the region. Now, we talk, talk about the long-term goals of the region, and much like villages, regions have goals too. Like the people of the region are trying to achieve something or trying to rectify something. So I need to, to bring in some of the, the original theme again. Um, the, the, the military elements of why, why we have a spotlight on the military right from the start. So I'm thinking, boy, I'm thinking that there, there is uh, a foreign entity, a foreign nation threatening the region. So it's not a direct threat. There's not soldiers marching into the region right away, but they're there. They may be uh, raiding into the region. 
And that may be why uh, Captain Learian is so focused on guarding the wilderness. Maybe the wilderness is how they're getting into the region. Um, so that is what uh, General Dernstall, the Baron, are focused on. That That's the all the military resources of the region are gearing up to handle the raiding of the foreign military into the area. So now, we, much like with the village, we define three points of adventure. And if you, you'll notice, village level, region level, country level, we define three points of adventure. And these are all three different points of adventure. So by the end of the campaign survey, by the end of filling out the workbook, you have nine adventures. And these can be tiered adventures. Um, so you have tier one play, tier two play, tier three play. On the plot lines tab, which we'll go over, we also start defining transitional adventures. So really, by the end of it, there's 12 adventures that get defined, uh, plus an overall campaign arc. At least one campaign arc gets defined. So this gears you up. This, this starts getting you into the actual adventure creation so you can start playing with the themes, playing with how you're going to piece this together. Maybe you have some published adventures that you want to run, and this you can start figuring out how you're going to slot those published adventures into the game. So on the region level, three points of adventure. These are slightly different. Uh, I, I've changed them up from the village. Some of them are the same. Some of them are different. Um, but kind of starting off, I, I like the idea of ancient ruins. Uh, let's hearken back. What what was here before? Let's maybe there's some magical items or some treasures in these ruins that the region needs to protect itself. Um, you know, I don't, as much as I play Dungeons and Dragons, um, I rarely have uh, dragons in my campaign settings. Um, but why not? Let's let's have a dragon den. Um, so in the region, there's a dragon den. Now, has it been there for a while? Is this a new dragon? We get we get to explore all that, and then. Oh, a monastery. So, yeah, this is just going to be a, a mysterious uh, monastery. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. I just there, there's going to be these this hermetic order that is far away from everything. That maybe there's a long journey attached to it. A lot of roadside encounters that we can build out for the PCs, but there's something in the monastery, knowledge, training, um, maybe it is where the sword of a fallen hero is being kept. Something is at the monastery that will need to be explored as an adventure point. So, as I said, I want to keep these to be about 20 minutes long we we're right at that point right now so i guess we'll cover the country and the continental area in the next video but i would love to know uh how you feel about what we have seen so far um i would love to know if you find this useful if you plan on using this tool and i would love to know about your campaign settings and the way you develop your campaigns and see I just love talking campaigns and adventure points and plot points. Uh, you can reach me at shondefrancis.com. I'm Sean at shondefrancis.com or on Twitter at shondefrancis. So let's connect and let's talk about your campaign settings. And I'll see you in video number three.